United States has submitted a draft resolution to the UN Security Council, which appears to call for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza. Secretary of State Antony Blinken says the resolution is linked to the release of captives. He made the comments following a visit to Saudi Arabia. It's part of a wider trip to the Middle East, where Blinken is holding talks on ending the war on Gaza. The U.S. has previously vetoed attempts at the Security Council to achieve a ceasefire in Gaza. For more on this, let's bring in our diplomatic editor, James Spade. Tell us more for us, James, about what's in this draft U.S. resolution that's circulating at the U.N. Well, the comments have come from Secretary of State Blinken, who's in the region, and we have the resolution that is in New York. Let me first tell you what the U.S. Secretary of State said in an interview with an Arabic TV channel before he left Saudi Arabia. He's just now arriving in uh, Egypt. We're pressing for an immediate ceasefire tied to the release of the hostages. In fact, we've actually put forward a resolution right now before the UN Security Council that does call for an immediate ceasefire tied to the release of hostages. Well, a couple of hours ago, Al Jazeera obtained this, which is a copy, we believe, of the latest US resolution. I think the language is important. So let me read you the key point of the resolution. It says the Security Council determines the imperative of an immediate and sustained ceasefire to protect civilians on all sides, allow for the delivery of essential humanitarian assistance and alleviate humanitarian suffering. And towards that end, and unequivocally supports ongoing international diplomatic efforts to secure such a ceasefire in connection with the release of all the remaining hostages. I think that's important because mm -hmm. normally when you get a ceasefire and the other ceasefire resolutions that have come from other parties other than the US, they demand a ceasefire. This one, the Security Council determ determines the imperative, i.e. it says it's important that there is a ceasefire. Mm -hmm. It doesn't seem to be demanding one, and it's also linking this ceasefire directly with the release of the main remaining captives being held by Hamas and other groups in Gaza. So it's a little bit more right. complicated than the Secretary of State made it sound in that TV interview. So, so what Blinken is saying is somewhat different to what's in the draft resolution uh, that's circulating at the UN. But this is still significant, all of this, given the previous US vetoes at the Security Council yes. on Gaza. And I think things are changing. I think mm -hmm. things are changing in two ways. One, we have those very important talks in Doha. Um, Secretary Blinken also says he believes the gap is being narrowed. It may well be that the US is planning to put this resolution forward after they've got a deal uh, here in Doha. The other thing is that this is not the only resolution floating around the Security Council. Uh, the elected members of the Security Council, the 10 members who aren't permanent, just served two years, they've had enough, they've got together, they've drawn up a resolution. They're close, I believe, to putting that one to a vote, demanding an immediate ceasefire with no complication in the language uh, whatsoever. Uh, two of those permanent, uh, sorry, elected 10 members, uh, Japan and South Korea, I think a little bit hesitant because they're very close US allies. Mm -hmm and they don't want to further um, antagonise the US. And France is also working on a resolution, we understand it. Uh, and my understanding also is the US, I think, is very hesitant about the idea of yet again, given what they've heard about famine coming to Gaza, what we've heard from the International Court of Justice, very, very worried that it might have to use its veto again. So mm. I think that's why this US resolution, which has been in the works for some weeks now, now has tougher language, language Israel won't like, but is it language that would force an immediate ceasefire? I think we need to ask some more questions today right. while the Secretary of State is in Cairo. Right. Diplomacy then at the UN, but also in the region, Cairo, the Secretary of State meeting a number of regional leaders there. And there is hope, cautious hope, it would seem, about a ceasefire deal being achieved in the coming days. Ceasefire talks, the technical talks on the ceasefire continue. Mm -hmm. They're going ahead here in Doha, but it is both Qatar and Egypt who've been the key mediators here. And the Secretary of State in two hours' time is meeting President Sisi uh, in Cairo to get an update, I think, on the talks and the regional situation. But he's also going to be meeting during his time in Cairo with representatives of Egypt, Jordan, Saudi Arabia, UAE, Qatar and the Palestinian Authority. So further meetings, I think, with all the key players in the Arab world, including the Palestinian Authority, those won't just talk about the ceasefire. I think they are also looking at the Palestinian Authority, how that can be uh, reorganised, revitalised, now it has a new Prime Minister, and then how you potentially look at the governance of Gaza after a war, and then, this seems a long way off, but trying to get political talks back on track for that two-state solution that the US always talks about, and always worth reminding people, the Benjamin Netanyahu and the Israeli government yeah. 
they don't even agree with that idea. Indeed. Thank you very much, James. James Space is our diplomatic editor. Let's get the view now from Occupied East Jerusalem and bring in Imran Khan, who's there for us. So, Imran, this draft resolution and, and the reaction uh, comments from the U.S. Secretary of State in Saudi Arabia, how is that all likely to go down with the Israelis? Will they be paying any attention? Well, we've spoken to the Prime Minister's office. They've issued us a very terse no comment on this. We've also reached out to Benny Gantz, who's the former Prime Minister, and a key member of the War Cabinet. The same response from him as well. We've reached out to others within the government. They're likely to all follow suit. This is going to be certainly an official no comment day by the looks of things. However, they will be poring over the language that James was just uh, referencing there. They'll be looking at what this act actually means for them. But remember, the UN Security Council, the United Nations in general, is treated with disdain by uh, the Israelis. Uh, they say that this is an organisation that has a lopsided attitude towards Israel when it comes to Israel. Since 2015, they say there have been about 140 resolutions against uh, Israel, and it's something that they've often dismissed. The Israelis are incredibly good at ignoring uh, United Nations uh, resolutions. However, this one is going to be incredibly difficult to ignore, mm. given that it will, is coming from their key ally. Right. So let's see what happens. Officially, I think we are going to get a no comment, but people will be talking about this. It's going to be a big talking point. So we'll get further reaction, I think, as the day goes on. And what about Hamas, Imran? This draft resolution also relies on them agreeing to free hostages, will they? Well, it's all about the language. Hamas will be looking at this. They've made their position incredibly clear. They want a permanent ceasefire. This resolution doesn't call for a permanent ceasefire. What it does say is it wants an immediate ceasefire. But the interesting word there, and maybe this does give some wiggle room, is sustained ceasefire. Does that mean that every hostage that is released for every set of hostages released, the ceasefire gets extended? Well, that's what we saw during the last ceasefire, which Hamas actually accepted. But Hamas have also been very critical in the past of United Nations resolutions. Take a look at the one on December 22nd uh, that was calling for aid coming into Gaza. Hamas said it didn't go far enough. So the language for Hamas is going to be very key. They're going to be looking at this. Uh, it is likely that they will reject it, given their previous positions. But this idea that it's an immediate but sustained ceasefire may well be something that Hamas might and I stress the word might, uh, be able to work with. Imran, thank you very much for that. That's Imran Khan, live for a say in Occupied East Jerusalem.